Hi everybody, it's been a while but I'm back and today we're going to talk about images and more specifically about how computers perceive images. So to us humans, this looks like a smiley face. To a computer, however, the exact same image looks like a very complex piece of math. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this conversion and even though it looks a little bit intimidating at first, it is actually super simple, I promise. Let's start with a quick intro to the most basic building block of digital images, the pixel. A pixel is the smallest controllable element of an image. So if we take this image, for example, and we zoom in, we'll eventually end up seeing all these tiny squares. And if we keep zooming in, the squares will grow larger but they'll never split into any more squares. That's because we're looking at the smallest unit of the image. So this would be one pixel, this would be another pixel, and same goes for the rest of these squares. In fact, pixels provide us with a system of coordinates. And with that in mind, let's begin exploring it by converting this image into math. We see that the size of the image is seven pixels by seven pixels, and because the image consists of only two colors, black and white, the best way to describe it would be in a binary form, meaning we can only use one or zero to describe the color. Computers in general will always prefer binary input because bits are also binary, but we'll talk about it more in a different video. So what does one and zero mean in our case? In a binary image, zero stands for black and one stands for white, which is also equivalent to false and true, by the way. And if we focus on our image and start filling in the values, all the white pixels will become one and all the black pixels will become zero. So we can see how each pixel suddenly got a numeric value. So now if we want to check the value of the fourth pixel in the fourth row, we'll get one. And if we're checking which value the second pixel in the fifth row holds, that would be zero. So now, when we understand the values and coordinates of our image, we can finally get rid of the background and only keep the numbers. When we do that, we see that we got this beautiful data structure, which we call a matrix. Pretty cool, eh? But what happens if our image contains more than just two colors and we can no longer describe it in a binary form? Let's take this monochromatic image as an example we see right away that this particular image has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors. And all these colors are shades of gray. In this case, the best color format to describe this image would be grayscale. So the grayscale format is using numbers anywhere from zero to 255 to describe the intensity of black, where once again, zero is black and 255 is white. So it's the highest contrast possible with black. So first, let's fill in the colors that we already know. So 255 is white and zero is of course black. Any other shade of gray can be represented with numbers from one to 254. So let's say that we want to find out how we represent a color that's only 50% black, which is the color we see in the very center of our image. To calculate this, we would have to divide our number of available values by two, and because zero also represents a color, which is black, our total number of available values would be 256 rather than 255. Therefore, 50% black in grayscale is represented by the value 128, which we can now also fill in. But let's try to calculate a slightly more complicated percentage. Let's say we want to find out what 15% black would look like. First, we subtract 15% from 100% and we get 85%. Then we'll divide 100 by 85 to get the ratio we need. And then we'll do the exact same as in the above example. Divide 256, which is the total number of available values, by 1.176, which is the ratio we just got. And the result is 217.68, which we can definitely round up and get 218. And again, we can fill it in in our image in the appropriate spots. 
And by using the exact same principles, we can fill in the rest of the values. And if you'll trace these back, you can also figure out which percentage of black I've used for these colors. So coordinate wise, let's quickly check what's the value of the fifth pixel on row number three. And we can see it's 128. So let's get rid of the background, add a bunch of commas and two huge square brackets. And we got our matrix again. This time, it represents a grayscale image rather than binary. Cool, so we're done with the easy part because so far we've been measuring the intensity of one particular shade. But what happens when we need to measure the intensity of colors across several shades? Let's take this colorful image as an example. We can clearly see one, two, three, four, five, six colors this time. However, these are not just different shades of the same color. They are actually very particular shades of red, blue, yellow, and green. So how exactly are we supposed to handle it? We actually have special formats to deal with these sort of situations. It is common to use the RGB format to describe a colorful image. So RGB actually stands for red, green, and blue, and it measures the intensity of each of these colors on a particular pixel. Here, we are also using values from 0 to 255. The only difference is we'll be checking across three different color channels and not just one. So I'll explain it with an example. So let's say that we want to find out how we describe the color white in RGB, okay? So we already know that white was represented by the topmost numeric value in grayscale. It is also true for RGB. However, since we're measuring the intensity of red, green, and blue, we'll say that white is represented by a set of three values, 255 for red, 255 for green, and 255 for blue, in this particular order. This is very important. Similarly, if we want to represent the color black with RGB, we'll get the value zero on the red channel, zero on the green channel, and zero on the blue channel. And as a matter of fact, whenever you see an RGB color mix consisting of three identical values, for an example, uh, RGB 777 or RGB 505050, you'll always be looking at a shade of gray. And this is because no color is overpowering the other, okay? But what happens if we want to represent the color yellow? which luckily we happen to have in our image. We already know that it would take in three values, one for each channel, and also we know that these three values will not be identical because yellow is not a shade of gray. So the numeric values which produce yellow are 255 on the red channel, 255 on the green channel, and finally zero on the blue channel. And this particular combination is actually as yellow as possible because we're using the topmost and the bottommost values available. But what if our shade is somewhere in between? If we take this green color, for example, it is represented by zero for the red channel, 200 on the green and 20 on the blue. So potentially we can make this green even greener if we boost the value of the green channel to 255 or 250, for example. Well, so far, it's all rainbows and butterflies, but how on earth are we going to represent this RGB image mathematically? And we'll actually start from this green color. Now, because each RGB image has three different color channels, we'll need to multiply the image by the amount of channels. In our case, we'll have three of them. When the left copy represents red, the center copy represents green, and the right copy, blue. And if you remember, this green was produced by RGB 0, 200, 20, which as you can see, we can easily fill in across our channels. And as a matter of fact, each of the green pixels will hold the exact same values. Now, we also know that black was RGB 0, 0, 0, and that white was RGB 255, 255, 255. And also yellow, if you guys remember, is 255 for the red, 255 for the green, and zero for the blue. And we can fill in the red, which will obviously have a higher intensity of red as opposed to green and blue, while this particular cyan shade will have a higher intensity of green and blue rather than red. 
So you can kind of guesstimate which color you're getting just by looking at the values. So, okay, now all the numeric values are in place. We can get rid of all the image copies in the background. Now, you may think we're getting three different matrices here. However, what we are actually getting is a single matrix with three different dimensions, AKA a three-dimensional matrix, where the first dimension holds the values for the red channel of the image, the second dimension holds the green values, the third dimension holds the blue values. In a multi-dimensional matrix, we stagger the channels one behind the other to form this complex data structure. For example, if we want to select a particular pixel in our image, let's say the sixth pixel on row number three, we are actually selecting all three channels at once. And we see that together, they produce the color RGB 100, 220, and 230, which is probably cyan because the green and blue values are overpowering the red. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time where I'll show you how to process images with Python.